Okay. Um, so again, thank you all for joining us today. We have a great program ahead of us this afternoon. Um, first, I want to start with a couple of housekeeping notes. In order to avoid background noise and distractions, we've heard a little bit of that already. Um, we just ask you to please mute your phone unless, of course, you have a question or comment. Um, also, if, for those of you that are on the web portion, feel free to use the chat function, um, which should appear on your screen if you've logged in. So um, now I'd like to introduce you all to today's guest speaker, Sean Williams. Sean Williams is currently the newsletter editor with the Kansas ANFP chapter. Sean has been CDM for the last three years, but has been in the food service industry for over 20 years. In addition to her role as the newsletter editor of this chapter, she is also president-elect to the Kansas Western District. She is currently serving as a member of the chapter leadership team and has served as an item writer and a chapter leader in the past as well. More recently, Sean has begun a new professional venture with Nutritious Lifestyles, Inc., which is based out of Orlando. She will be traveling all over the country as a consultant um, to new CDMs. So let's work on. Hi. Are you, you want to just go ahead and let's get started? Yes, let's go ahead whenever you're ready. Okay, welcome everyone, and I do appreciate you coming to hear what I have to offer. I hope that my tips and tricks kind of give you some insight on how you can better communicate with your members, um, even as a sole person. Abigail, when I'm ready for you to switch slides, I'll just say next. Perfect. So um, what we're going to do is we're just going to keep it fun, creative, informative, but above all, we want to keep it interesting. Next. First of all, you want to give it a schedule. This, this is part of a part of a requirement of the communication award is to have four publications for the year. So if you give yourself a schedule, you'll stay on task. You'll set the publication deadlines in your calendar, and that'll help you stay when you know it'll help you keep on top of getting reports and the reminders to everyone. If you want to do it three weeks out, two weeks out, and then one week out of for uh, so you have time for approval. The approval from the chapter president is key and it's very important. Unless they've assigned it to another party, uh, it allows for a second set of eyes to proofread the information that you've put in uh, with enough time to make corrections if needed before the publication. Next. Must have items. Your chapter logo and it must be approved by the ANFP. You want to make sure that it's what ANFP is expecting. Can someone, can they mute their microphones? Can you make another announcement? Oh. Okay. There we go. We'll keep going now. <clears throat> Um, like I said, the ANFP, it must be the ANFP approved logo, and you want to save it to a general file, so, like all of the types of logos and pictures that are ANFP required, just make a file that is for go-to inserts. And then you want your board members. In your newsletter, you want your board members recognized because it's really important that the members know who they are inquiring to, and it kind of puts a face to a name, so it's a little bit more recognizable. And then now this is an example of a voting ballot. So when we do have our voting, our voting uh, publications, you want to make sure that it follows the bylaws, policy and procedures, and make sure that it's really done correctly so that the voting procedures and protocols are followed. Next, headshots. In your newsletter, you want to put a face to a name that kind of follows suit with the board members, but you have other committee members that write articles for the newsletter, so it's real important to put a face to that name as well. Hey, Maria, Sean, Maria, do me a favor. Yeah. 
I got a water in the freezer. I'm on a call. If I go off, it's going off. Hi, I'm sorry. We can hear some background noise from some of our callers. So if you don't mind muting your phone. I'm not sure who that is, but if you don't, everybody, please mute your phone at this time. To be sure we can hear Sean. Kind of sounded like Omar. <laughs> uh oh, sorry. Thought it was. Okay. Let's go ahead and keep going, Sean. Okay, go ahead. The next must have is a save the date. So you must have a section for saving the date for different events that are coming up. Whether it's in three months or six months, it's important to keep this in front of your members' eyes so they can mark those dates and make sure that they in their calendar. Uh, go, ahead. go ahead and mute your phone, please. We should only hear Sean at this time. Go ahead. You want to have important causes, something that the CDMs are fighting for to keep the CDMs um, in, the, in the public eye and in the um, legislative eye, because these are things that we're fighting for to keep us ahead of the game so we stay um, we stay available and we want to make sure that we're fighting for the right causes so we want to make it known to our members on what it is that we are doing and working on legislative uh, wise. Next, items of interest, you want to keep it fun, fun and informative and then also informative. So the fun part could be where it could be a section of just helpful things, like job listings. Just because the newsletter goes out to CDMs doesn't mean that they don't know of someone that might be looking for work. So if you have job listing section for your members, they can put out there that they have, you know, cooks that are needed, aides that are needed, and with the location, then they know about how where that, that position is located, and it could be very helpful to all your members, because we know how hard it can be to find good help. Fun and informative. This is a section I created to help put faces to names, not only with the committees and board members, just with the other members. And I kind of made it into a game with a door prize at that following meeting. So this was getting to know you, who am I? I put in different face pictures and put different slogans that they may be known for. And then at the meeting, if you got all the answers right and submitted them to me, I would choose uh, draw your name out of a a bowl and I gave away a door prize. And it was actually fun because people got to know other faces that they didn't typically know. And informative, <clears throat> it's important to have your districts identified. If you have districts, you want to make sure that the members know what district they fall in if you do have districts. If you are just one state chapter then you know you want to kind of create something that lets them know who who's their closest board member maybe who's their closest executive board member something to keep it informative that they can stay on top of who they need to answer to or ask questions of next backgrounds and fonts now what I have here well I thought I had put some more text on there Abigail I don't know where it went um, what I have on here is some, just some different ideas. There are branding ideas in the volunteer handbook that help with protocol on what ANFP will expect and what works best if you're looking for the communication award. What I have here is just some ideas. The first one is the original background and with different fonts and different colors. Learn what your program offers, how you can lighten something or uh, change the contrast. That way your fonts show up a little differently. And then choosing the best font for the best background. As you can see with those three examples, the blue, for example, how it was not visible in the first one, but it becomes visible in the last one. So it's just important to get to know your program that you're using to build your newsletter so you know what it actually offers you. But again, you want to refer to the volunteer handbook and to the winning newsletter templates that is on the ANFP website. Next. Advertising. 
you can have your uh, paid advertisers and this right here is an example of a business card size ad. So if you're advertising for a three line ad or a business card or quarter page or half page, you want to make sure that it's known to what size they're going to get. And then of course you have just your thank yous. If they're in a purchased package program from vendors to partners uh, program, and then you need to let them know what kind of size ad they will be getting in that program. Or if you have a thank you section, this is the type of ad you could put in just to say thanks for being there, thanks for helping. Next. And Sean, why don't we take a moment here and just pause with any questions. Um, I think with the callers on the line, I think you've seen Sean has really laid out a great um, framework here. So for those of you that maybe are going to step into the newsletter editor role or maybe that are struggling with yours currently, um, you know, this outline here that Sean's given and really the pieces that should be included in your newsletter, um, he's really given us all of those tools right here. So does anybody have any questions right now? All right, I'm trying to unmute everybody, make sure everybody gets a chance to talk. Okay. Um, it doesn't sound like we have any questions at this time, so I'm going to go ahead and unmute Sean, and we'll keep going. All right, next. This right here is a way to celebrate each other. When you're communicating with your members, uh, you want to do email blasts, Facebook posts, and you can always keep those a little more fun, a little more creative. Like, so if this could be a newsletter uh, ad to just say, hey, look who just got a deficiency-free survey, or a Facebook. And these, there's ways that you can create these, and we'll go over those here in just a little bit. Uh, it's really easy, but it's a really good way to celebrate each other, and you can actually have a little more fun with this. Next. like this one here, making inserts for email and Facebook. Choose a background or clip art from Google. Um, whatever image you're looking for, save it to a special picture file. And then you insert it into a Word document. And then in that document, there's a, a place for you to wrap text behind, or wrap behind text. This way you can move that picture around freely. And then when you type up the information that you're wanting to go on top of that picture, you type it up and then you move that picture over your uh, text and your text will show through as you see here with the example. Choose a good font and a clear font and you want to center it to the picture so that way it looks more like an advertisement of or a notice. Go ahead. Like I said, click, up, click on the picture uh, if you have it wrapped behind the text you'll be able to move that picture freely wherever it is you're needing to center it. And then once you've made the creation that you're looking for on the Word document, you have a snipping tool. And that is how you create JPEGs, GIFs, or bitmap photos. And then you save it as an actual photo. So when you go to drop it into your newsletter, you're going to be inserting a picture. And Abigail, I think you said you had something you wanted to share at this point. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and give you all a brief tutorial um, as to how um, we can do this. And there's a couple different ways. Sean um, has her own method. I have my own. Some of you out there probably have your own way of doing that. But just to give you sort of a quick overview, we're going to start doing that. Um, so bear with me one here. So here I've got my open Word document. We're going to go up to Insert. Here you would go into your clip art. And see here you can search for backgrounds, or if you have a background, like Sean said, that you wanted to Google and use that one instead, you're certainly free to do that. So let's go ahead and we'll drop this one in. All right, so here we have our background. Now here's where I do things just a little bit differently. Um, again, everybody's going to have their own method to do it. It's whatever you're comfortable with. So I would go back up to Insert, and I use a text box. This is just the way that I was taught how to do it. It doesn't mean it's the right way or the wrong way. Okay. And you would be able to format this if you wanted to. You format the um, shape. You could go no fill. 
You could change the line color to however you choose. We'll give it green. And from here, you see our green border. And we can move this around wherever we'd like. Um, so that's another way to do that also. Um, we can certainly uh, write out more detailed instructions for everybody if that's what they'd like. Um, but again, there's several ways to do this um, when you're placing the text. And then you would click, right click, file, save as picture. You would want to save that wherever you need to save that. And here, right here, you're going to see you're doing a JPEG. So you would save that there. And let's see, take a look. Hopefully it's saved out here. Not seeing it. Let's try this one more time. Save picture as desktop. There we go. Give it a picture. Yeah. <laughs> and let's see. There we go. And then this is where you could copy. Oh, I don't know why my text didn't show up. Um, copy and paste where you would drop it into your newsletter. OK, are there any questions there on that? I know I have you all on mute, so one second. Any questions there for that? It looks like Carol Rice wrote down, please do write out the directions. Sure, yeah, absolutely. We'd be happy to do that. Um, sometimes it's easier to refer to something when it's in writing rather than you know us showing you. So we're yes. happy to do that. OK, let's go back here. OK, ready and, to move on? Yep. OK, get to know all the avenues of communication. We have Skype. Now, Skype is free. It's a good way to do face-to-face -face conference calls. It's a, it's a, you can do it off your smartphone. You can do it on an iPad. You can do it on your computer. This right here might be the easier way to go, but if you're wanting to keep, um, I don't know, like this go-to meeting, these are things, this right here, Skype is what I know. Conference calling. There are some um, information, there's more information about it. Um, I was under the impression it was free, but doing some research, uh, Abigail's really helped me out with this. So as far as conference calling and then go-to meeting, I'm going to let her elaborate a little bit on that because she is the professional when it comes to that. But these are very important aspects of way to communicate with your members as a whole. Go ahead, Abigail. Sure. Um, so as Sean said, Skype is free. Um, it's very easy to use. What you need to do is download the app, which, um, as Sean mentioned, it's available for your smartphone. You could use it on your computer, your tablet. Um, if you so wish to do a um, visual or video component, that's available. that feature is also available, so you'd be able to see others while you're on the call. Um, of course, you would need the proper equipment for that also. So if you want more information on how Skype works or to download it, please go to Skype.com. Um, and then here we have conference calling. This is a pay-per-use plan. Um, it's fairly economical. It costs about five cents per minute, and it can accommodate up to 300 callers. So um, if you had a large group of callers, this would be a great option. You would need to create an account um, as well as provide a credit card number in order to use the service, however. You can um, instantly set up calls with this, or you can set up calls in advance. So it's, that's kind of a nice feature about that. Um, currently, they have a free trial available, so maybe if you're not sure if you want to commit to it or provide your credit card information, you might want to give that a try first. Um, but if you do decide to use the service, there's no contracts, um, and you simply just pay for what you use. So if you wanted to try that, um, go to conferencecalling.com and check that out. And then many of you are always um, would are probably already familiar with GoToMeeting. This is what we use for chapter chat. Um, definitely more elaborate services here. Um, you could you know, do things such as we're doing here with a PowerPoint presentation. You can share your screen. You can record meetings. Um, you would get a use of toll-free numbers. However, this um, particular program is a little bit more costly. Um, and their cheapest plan that I saw currently is $24 a month. That only allows up to five attendees per call, and it has limited features. So you're kind of getting a range here of all um, types of communication services, but I would encourage everybody to check them all out and see what works best for your chapter or board. Thank you, Abigail. Yeah. Moving on. 
Okay. Now, any questions about communication real quick? Okay, we're going to go ahead and move on. What I've done here with the last few slides is I'm trying to give you screenshots on how to navigate through the ANFP website. Page one is getting to know your chapter. So here you are. The first screenshot is actually the ANFP one. And as you can see, you go to events and community, and you'll go chapter and then chapter portal. And that will take you to your chapter link. And as you can see on page two, that is what that page will look like. Your link is in red right there below your ANFP um, logo. And you can click that, and then it'll take you to page three, which is actually your page that you see. That's the first one. So getting to your page is really simple. Um, if you just take a few minutes to kind of read what it is you're clicking and understand what it is you're going to, it's really easy to follow. So again, that's getting to know your chapter under events and community. Go to your chapter portal, and then you'll click the link, and it'll take you to your chapter page. Next. And then as you navigate through the website, page four is actually after you've clicked, gotten onto your um, home page, up at the top there's going to be like the, your home, your um, links and resources, chapter news, and about our chapter. I've clicked chapter news, and at the beginning of the page it starts to tell you of events that are going on, and as you scroll down that page you're going to see links, uh, other links that you're able to have, or did I get that? I think I got those two backwards. The chapter, the page six is actually the scrolling down. Uh, sorry about that, guys. That one is actually where your newsletters are going to be, and then just below that are pictures of events that you can upload to ANFP, and they will post them for you. Um, the, going back to page five, which should have been page six, that is another link for links and resources. And as you can see, there's going to be templates. And these template links are great resources on how to do things like volunteer uh, callings and for other type of letters like new student letters, um, inactive member letters. These are templates that help you reach out to your members. Next. And as we continue on, if you go back, what I did was I went back to the original page where our link is set for your chapter. And then when you, before you hit that link, if you see to the left, you have a list. And you're going to go to My Certifications. And under that certification, when you click that, you're going to see this next page, which shows reports that are needed. And um, under the red line, you will see some real small print. And what that is, is that's actually giving you different options. And it's for like management, um, web page editing reports, rosters, things of that nature. So this page that's there in the middle is actually falling under reports. And these are reports that are needed for, like when you're filling out your end of the year uh, reports for awards to kind of get yourself qualified. Um, chapter editing, that is the very last word or link of those line, that line of words that's up at the top, right under the red, is what you can see her arrow. The very last one is chapter editing. This will take you where you need to upload pictures, upload forms, upload um, update of information. Go ahead and go next. And so this is the upload form. You'll fill this out. It's so simple. You'll fill this out, and then you'll scroll down, and you'll see where you're supposed to upload the pictures or documents that you're needing. And after you've uploaded one, it'll give you the option to add another and add another. And you can add, they ask that you do this in 25 increments if you're doing pictures. So you want, if you've got a whole slew of pictures you would like to upload to your website, do it in 25 increments. That way it's a little more easier for them to make a, um, an album. And they do it through Flickr. So it's really nice. You get a really nice uh, slideshow. Uh, it works really well. Scrolling down from that, you'll see the word submit. 
you must click that and it will give you the response of thank you, your forms have been submitted and that way you know that they've received it. So it's not necessarily that you have to go through email to get these things updated. They actually have the forms there on the website. Next. Sean, I just, um, can we pause here for a minute just to be sure, sure. we don't have any questions out there? I know, um, you know, from where I sit, I do get frequent questions about how to navigate the portal. And yes, we're always here to help. Um, you know, if you're not comfortable reaching out to national staff, I would encourage leaders to reach out to other um, chapter leaders if they have questions about it. But at this time, I just wanted to open it up to see if anyone has questions. No? Are there okay. any questions about how to upload? No? Okay. Well, certainly okay. feel free to reach out to myself or Sean after the program if you do have questions and you want to take them offline. Please do. Please do. Okay, next. Okay, now we're going to move over to the ANFP Connect page. And this is another place, great place for templates and resources to help you uh, navigate through what you're needing for your members. Um, if you look where it's, I've got it scrolled down, and that is the, I, I can't really see it real well, but I think that says volunteer. Volunteer resources? Yes, ma'am. Volunteer resources. You click on what you're needing and the next page will show you all the templates. And these are the different templates that you have to offer, that ANFP has to offer on the Connect page. And one of the templates is Call All Volunteers. So if you're in need of volunteers and you're needing to recruit people to help you with committees or even executive board seats, this is what you're going to send out to them. And you can even do this as a link in your newsletter, or you can do this as, you know, just a mail out for new, new members to kind of help see and help encourage them to get involved. Next. And now we're going to talk about reporting CEs. Going back to the very first page of the ANFP, you're going to see where you're going to go to the same place. So you're going to go to your chapter portal, and then it's going to go, as you see, to um, that same one with the link, and then going to go under My Certifications, and then you're going to see the screen that's on page three. And as you can see, it's got your information up top. It, the, the next box is your uh, hours that you have and that have remaining, and then you're going to see where it says Report CEs, which is the second button down. And that is the one you're going to click to do your reporting. So next, once you've clicked that report CEs, you're going to see different options. Now this screenshot wouldn't allow me to show all of the options, but this is the, the first few that are up there. And in, on your state meetings or district meetings, those are pre-approved. So you would go under the pre-approved uh, reporting. And what you see next is the pre-approved one. So uh, in that window there, that top window that says uh, program ID, that's where you're going to put the number that ANFP Nationals gives your meeting. And the hours will generate, and then you continue filling out the, the city, the state, and where it was located. And then when you click report, all of that will go into your hours. Next, the, uh, not the next screen, but page six. If you go back over here to page four, you will see where there's different types. And one of the one that I clicked for page six is teachings. So I, this is a self-reporting self thing that I would do as a CDM with my team or that you would do with your, with your team. Now, I want to make sure that you understand this does include in-services or special meetings but it's only in services or special meetings that is not a requirement of your facility. What that means is if you get a new slicer, this is my perfect example because I had to do one. I got us a brand new slicer and I had to give this in service on how to use it, the proper protocol, the reading of the manual. That is not an in service that is required by my facility. So that's outside that scope. So this is something that you can report. And then like special meetings. Like um, 
And another example is I had to have a corrective action meeting a couple of weeks ago in regards to a therapeutic diet. So this was not a meeting that was required of the once a, once a month meetings that's, that's typically required for facilities. This was an out, a different one. It was a special one. So I can actually report that as what kind of meeting it is and what it was for, and then I will get CEs for that. So that is the window on Go ahead. Did you say something, Abigail? No. Did somebody have a question? We've got just some background noise there. Okay. So there on page six, you'll see how the information that they need so that they can look at it, because you'll submit it, and then once they've reviewed it, they'll either approve it or deny it. But typically it's approved when you have the right information and it's understood as what it was for. Next. Okay, now it's time for some good questions. If you have any questions about how to report CEs, we're, I'll be more than happy. Abigail can go back and we can kind of look to see what it is that your question is referring to. Any questions at all? I have a question. Go ahead. Abigail, hi, this is Kathy from Utah. Um, I was just reading, I missed, I think I missed a deadline on the, I was, I misread the Diamond Award um, nomination. We're not applying for that, but, so the membership and communication were supposed to be in by March 31st also? That is correct. So if we didn't get it in, then we're, it's too late. Yeah, unfortunately, because um, our ACE um, dates were moved up, uh, you know, we had typically in the past we'd have held that in August, but this year's in June, we had to move up our deadlines as well. Okay. So this is sort of a transition year. It won't happen again this year uh, or the following years because we'll be able to send out notification earlier. Okay. All right. Sorry about okay. that. Okay. Does anyone have questions for Sean? Okay, and I just want to also mention that you certainly can reach out to Sean or me or anybody here at ANFP. There's also a um, reporting tutorial on the ANFP YouTube channel also if you wanted to review that. That's also available um, along with the ANFP Connect tutorial as well. But certainly don't hesitate to um, contact me or Sean or, again, any other ANFP staff. We'll be happy to walk you through any of that. Uh, another thing that I would like to offer and extend to that, Abigail, is like for Carol Rice when she said she wanted the information typed up, I will be more than happy to do that and submit that to Abigail, and then Abigail can send that out to you. Great. Thank you. So if you have, any, go ahead. <laughs> if you have any specifics. Like, I know I only covered a, a few things, but if you have specifics, if you would email, you, is it okay if I just ask them to email me, Abigail? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, my email address, let me type it in here to everyone. My email address that you can reach me at is cdm at yahoo.com. You're more than welcome to email me specifics that you would like to know. And if I do not have an answer, I will find them. And that's pretty much my presentation. So Abigail, now it's over to you. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, thank you, um, Sean. We really appreciate it. And thank you all for taking the time out of your day. Um, no doubt our members will find the information we had here today useful and applicable to their chapter communications management. Um, I have just a few reminders. Um, early bird registration for ACE is available until May 13th. So if you're planning to attend ACE this year, we just want to encourage you to register as soon as possible. Um, after that time, the registration fee does increase by $100. So it behooves you to register early. Um, also, if you're planning to attend ACE, we ask that you please mark your calendars for Friday, June 10th from noon to 1.30. This is our volunteer luncheon. This gives us the opportunity to recognize our volunteers for all the hard work that they've done throughout the year. 
Um, additionally, please consider attending Chapter Best Practices on Sunday, June 12th from 5.20 to 6.30 p.m. We're going to be discuss discussing Chapter Best Practices for Meeting Planning and Vendor Management. Um, so be on the lookout for that invite and more information on that in the coming weeks for both events. Um, last, if you're looking for financial assist assistance in order to attend ACE, I would encourage you to consider applying for the grant. The deadline to complete the application is this Saturday, April 30th. Um, for more information, go to our website, anfponline.org. Um, you can also complete the application there as well. So thank you everyone for attending and have a wonderful day. Thank you guys.